Norman Wells is a historic town of about 800 located on the Mackenzie River between the Mackenzie Mountains and the Franklin Mountains. The town was established in 1920 by Imperial Oil from the discovery of large pools of oil under the river and under the community. This year, Imperial Oil is celebrating their 100th anniversary of operations in Norman Wells. The planned anniversary celebration had to be postponed due to the ongoing COVID crisis. Frank Pope moved from Scotland to Canada to work for the well-known Hudson's Bay Company and was based in Northern Ontario. He then went from Nunavik to Nunavut and at last to the Northwest Territories. He left the Hudson's Bay Company and came west to work for the federal government. Mr. Pope worked for the Indian Affairs Branch in Fort Chippewan and Fort Vermilion, Alberta. He then moved north to work with Northern Affairs in Aklavik before transferring in 1969 to the new Northwest Territories government in Fort Good Hope. What is your favorite part of living in Norman Wells? I think right from the very first day I arrived in Norman Wells, the first thing that you notice is the beauty of the scenery in the surrounding area. We have mountains close to town behind us. We have mountains across the Mackenzie River. Uh, we have a major river flowing th right through by the community. And uh, I think that because we have so much wildlife close to the community, we have muskox, we have moose, we have caribou, uh, we have all kinds of wolves and bears come around at certain times of year. I, I think it's just that beauty of the place. And in addition to is the people. We've got a very diverse community, partly Aboriginal community. Uh, a lot of non-Aboriginal people are working here. And I, I think it's just all around just a great place to live. Norman Wells is the largest of five communities in the Satu region and is the governmental, industrial and transportation hub of the region, servicing all five communities of the region. The beauty of the Satu region enhances numerous tourism opportunities such as whitewater rafting, ecotourism, hiking and the Canal Trail from Norman Wells to the Yukon, which is known as the toughest hike in North America, as well as several campgrounds and picnic day use areas. What is or has been your greatest accomplishment as Mayor of Norman Wells? I think the, the major accomplishment I would think in recent years is working with our current council. We took over a council that had been tainted in previous years. They had been put into administration. In our election, we elected myself with a little bit of background and experience in the municipal affairs and six brand new councillors who had no experience whatsoever. And I think that in a short period of time, we've worked with these councillors. We've got the uh, faith of the community back because of our actions and that we're very transparent. We let people know what we're doing. So I think that's been a big accomplishment is working with a bunch of new councillors and doing the amount of work that we've managed to perform since we were elected. The community is serviced by air transportation out of Edmonton year-round or by driving over the winter ice road during the winter season from Wrigley and all points south. Norman Wells also has a float plane base for use during the summer. Freight commodities come in during the summer months by barge. What are some of the greatest challenges to living in a remote, isolated community in northern Canada? I believe if I take a look at Norman Wells, the biggest problem we've had here over the last 50 or odd years has been the boom bust situation we live in. We've had some really good times. When I came here in 84, there were three, 4,000 people living in this community, in the camps and working, building the islands, uh, building the new CPF uh, facility, building a pipeline down to the Southland. And then uh, a few years later, we got 800 people and not an awful lot happening. Then a few years after that, we've got oil exploration taking place um, companies spending hundreds of million dollars annually to explore for oil and gas. So I, I think that it, the boom bust situation is the one thing that we have learned to adapt to as a community. What is the greatest lesson you have learned since you've been mayor of Norman Wells? Uh, I think the thing is that the, the biggest lesson is number one, to be transparent, to talk to people. If they ask you a question, answer it or get them an answer, don't push them away, and always be respectful to people, um, address any concerns that they have, and do not be afraid to be out in public, do not be afraid to go to social events, 
Uh, get out and be a part of the community. I think that's the biggest lesson is uh, don't hide away from people, but get out there and be a part of the community. Over the last two years, I've had the pleasure to serve alongside Mayor Frank Pope as Deputy Mayor. His steady leadership has been experienced by staff as well as all council members. I've appreciated his support and responsiveness to members of council, as well as his work to build partnerships and a sense of community across the Sautu region. He is without a doubt a man of great character and integrity, someone who cares about the residents of Norman Wells and who is deeply passionate about our community. Beautiful town, great people. Our uh, council are a very hard working group of people. We have a fantastic staff that put in a lot of long hours on behalf of their the community. Uh, the beauty of our surroundings is just one reason I stay here. I think it's also one reason a lot of other people stay here. We have a uh, one major corporate citizen being Imperial Loyal, uh, who employ a considerable amount of people through themselves and through their contracting staff. Uh, we are a fairly wealthy community. A lot of people work. There's very little unemployment. And I think those who are on employment chose to be so, not because there's no work available. Uh, we have relied for many, many years on oil and gas exploration in the region, but that has fallen by the wayside uh, in recent years because of the slump in Alberta, the uh, several damages to our pipeline over the last few years. But uh, the um, bright spot being that the company have put a lot of money back into A, repairing the pipeline and B, upgrading the facilities here when they had some incidents. So I think we're here for maybe a little longer than a lot of people anticipate. They're getting a good flow from the field for oil. It is a top quality oil which is still better than the bitumen they get down south. So I think this field will be in operation for quite a few more years yet. So I think that'll be the lifeblood of the community. I believe one of the aims and aspirations of this council is to find other economic uh, ways to keep our people here, to keep them working, and uh, just to keep our community vibrant. As I've said before, we are the center of the Satu region. There are four First Nation communities all within 100 miles of here and uh, they are all good citizens to our community. They support our community, we support them. Uh, we have a pretty good working relationship with all of them. And uh, that is good. We need better communication, or sorry, uh, transportation links between our communities. It is expensive to fly. Uh, we have winter roads for about two months uh, between January and the middle of March and we do a lot of inter-community travel. The children are able to do inter-community travel for sports in the different schools in the region. And we really do need that link to the south though with an all season road. Get that in here. I think that can encourage mining to build up again. I think it can encourage oil companies to return and explore. We have unlimited sources of um, gas and oil in very close proximity to the community in addition to the imperial oil uh, find. Um, Conoco, Husky, MGM have all got discoveries in the region and we certainly like to have them back exploring and putting some more money into our community and in addition to exploring, developing. Let's get that oil flowing south, let's get more than just exploration dollars in the community. Let's get more of a, a focus on being fixed, that it's not going to be just boom bust. We want to boom and we want to remain in a good level economic state. Mm -hmm.